while I can't say I'm familiar running Solus or Solus, whatever you want to call it, as just like a daily driver, I've always been aware of it in my periphery, and that's for one very good reason. It is one of the very, very few truly independent distros like Debian, like Arch, like Gentoo, where it has its own independent packaging system and its own package manager, in this case being EO Package. And while the community is nowhere near the size of those other distros, I do think that this makes it something special and something that should really stick around. But there's been some issues, and we're not even just talking about recent issues, going all the way back to July of 2021 when the 4.3 release came out, because this was the last time that anything was posted on the official blog. Now this wasn't a big deal for a couple of months, but when it got to the point when 4.4 would normally have been released, Nothing was being said. Some users got a little bit worried, but as updates were still coming out for 4.3, packages were still being updated, no one really cared that much and kind of just went about their day. That's until January of this year, when the servers just stopped working. The website was down, the forum was down, the repos were down, and it seemed like the project just suddenly died. Now, it didn't, and there was still communication going on over on the Solus Twitter. As many have noticed, the Solus servers are down. I have confirmed that the data is intact. This appears to be a libvert DNS mask issue. I will be consulting with IT folks at work this afternoon to see if we can't figure this one out. Thank you for your patience, Beatrice. Note, this only affects the dev tracker, forums, and website. Our package mirror is unaffected. That did disappear at one point as well. So this outage will not affect your Solus installs. And then later in February, when most of the stuff got sorted out, in case anyone is worried, we are still very much alive. The main site is up and I've updated it with all of the work I'd been doing to bring it up to date. This includes a brand new style for the team page to accommodate our growing ranks. Locally, we were hit by a fairly bad snowstorm at the end of last week. Despite feeling better, it just wasn't worth the risk to travel to the data center before the weekend hit. I'll be heading in again in the next few days to try and get the build infrastructure up again. Alongside that, I'm finishing up the new help center. Other team members have done a lot of work there as well, and I'm really looking forward to everyone's reactions. This has been a long time coming and will make it easier to get updates pushed out when PRs are merged. When service is fully restored, I'll write a series of blog posts to get folks up to speed on the last year or so. A postmortem on the service outage, a summary of website and help center upgrades, and an introduction to our new org infrastructure. But even till today, things are not fully back online. But during this saga of outages, it reinvigorated interest in wondering where the next version is. Where is 4.4? What is the ETA on 4.4? Should I go and wait for an up-to-date ISO, or can I just go and use it now? Now, as I said, packages were still being updated, but it's been two years at this point, so a lot of people were starting to get really confused. If you go back to the updates prior to 4.3, usually you'd see a new ISO every four or so months. So two years seems like a pretty big gap, but during these extended outages, something else started to happen. Not only is there no new ISO now, now users are not getting updates. Not getting solar system updates since two months. Configuration issue? Are we planning on getting updates this week? Updates please. Users were getting very, very worried now. But luckily during all of this, one member of the packaging team has been doing damage control and basically the only person doing it. Stordy is an absolute legend. 
No, this isn't an issue with your configuration. The developer portal and build server are still unfortunately offline. And until they can be brought back up, nobody can push updates. But it's pretty easy to miss a one-off comment on a Reddit thread, so a lot of people assumed that nothing was being said and the project was being completely silent. This wasn't helped by the fact that Buddies of Budgie, which is basically Budgie's list of recommended distros to use Budgie with, decided to demote Solace. It is currently cautioned against installation on Solace. It may not work out of the box on modern hardware, as no new release has been made since mid-2021. Additionally, Solace infrastructure has not been operational for over two months, resulting in numerous packages remaining out of date with security vulnerabilities going unpatched. Over on Boiling Steam, there was an article titled Time to Stop Using and Recommending Solace, and then over on DistroWatch, it decided to finally mark the project as dormant. This is an automated process, not something done by like an individual user, but when something's marked as dormant, people just assume that, that means dead. And then finally, you had the video by DistroTube. Is Solace dead? If you have to ask, the answer's probably yes. So simple as that then, Solace is dead. Clearly, it's time to move on to something else. Or how about we go and fork Solace? This is not the only person who suggested it. Anytime a project is on the verge of dying, people always talk about it. If I'm being honest, if someone tried to fork Solace, what would probably happen is they'd keep it going for like a couple of days, a week, maybe a month, and then the project would be abandoned anyway. These didn't seem like they had that much traction behind them. It didn't seem like they could just make a new team. And as I said, Storty has been doing an incredible job trying to reassure people that things are okay, the project is not dead, just give it a bit more time and you'll find out what's going on into the future. And then seemingly out of nowhere, Joshua Stroh came back and made this post over on the Reddit. Writing the ship, along with cross-posting it, over onto Twitter as well. So far, it's a fairly surface level plan with more news to come in a couple of days. Many of you have raised concerns on the current state of communications, leadership, and a lack of direction slash vision in Solace, and those concerns are fully understood. Now, he says that it has nothing to do with DT's video. Oh, look, we'll believe him, but... You know, without getting into too much detail yet, we believe it is important for our community to understand that the following actions are in our immediate future or currently ongoing. We have been in the process of spinning up alternative infrastructure for Solus. This infrastructure is currently being sponsored by former Solus contributors and will be supported by the Open Collective contributions going forward. If you didn't know, the Open Collective's actually still been going strong throughout all of this. Maybe some people dropped off and that would make sense, but they have still been getting monthly funding by quite a lot of people and quite a lot of money. A new binary package repository server that has been validated to handle incoming packages and updates the indexes for the new Unstable and Shannon repos. I don't know why they're called Shannon repos, but this is their term for the stable repos. A new server has been brought up that will handle package building as well. We expect that the build to FerryD repo pipeline will be restored over the next few days as we work on setting up all the build bits again. FerryD, as it says on the GitHub, is a fast and safe reliable transit for the delivery of software updates to users. A new server has been provisioned for our Flareum and is currently being brought up to the latest Flareum version. There may be a fair few feature changes and hiccups as we're moving from a beta release from 2019 to the latest release. Flareum is basically just a bit of forum software. I've not personally seen many sites using this and I've not used it myself, but that's what they're using. A new server to be provisioned for Fabricator. Setup of that will happen in the next few days. And Fabricator is basically a project for doing repo auditing. 
There are organisational structure changes on the horizon, with shared access to accounts and assets pending. There is some additional work that needs to happen after this, but we will keep you all posted and put out a more comprehensive plan on Tuesday. This is why I'm not convinced that people like DT had nothing to do with this. He was working on something, absolutely. If you go back through Storty's messages, he does say, oh, something's being worked on here, something's being worked on here. But why would you put out an announcement for an announcement? Just make the announcement. I feel like it was pushed a little bit ahead because everyone just thought the project was over. And finally, we'll be sharing a plan that involves familiar faces rejoining the project or collaborating in some form. New organizational structure, improved transparency, which is definitely something that needs to happen over the past couple of years, elimination of bus factor across the board, Solus 4.x, and even early plans for Solus Five. It is important to note that this plan has been approved by all concerned Solus team members, and those team members will be staying aboard the ship, working in a more cohesive and transparent manner for all. All the best, the new Solus team. Now, at this stage, the only other bit of concrete information we have is this right here. Will I have to wait for the website slash forums to be back up to find documentation on contributing, or is there something I can start reading now, while we wait for updates on Tuesday? I still need to dig the changes that were done around the website and help center after I left, but the general plan is to patch the old one for the immediate future, and once everything else that is more important is sorted, updates getting out, new ISO, etc., I'll nuke the old site and docs and build one out using Docusaurus. Docusaurus is what Buddies of Budgie documentation is built with, it's what the Serpent OS docs will use, and so it makes sense for Solos to use it as well. Honestly, I wish the best for Josh, for Storty, for everybody else in the Solos team, and hopefully you can actually bring things back together and make the project keep running. A lot of people now have sort of had their trust burnt with Solace, and it's going to take some time to rebuild that and get people excited about the project again. But if all things go well, it seems like Solace is still going to be around a long time into the future. Now, I could be completely wrong, so if you clip that and then a month from now the project is dead, well, you know... It is what it is, but hopefully everything goes well and we see Solace long into the future. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use Solace? Did you even know this was happening? Did you see DT's video or are you involved in the Solace team? I would love to know. So if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scribes Deli Berape linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.